Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. You are watching the Theo Evening Video for January 11th, 2016. What do we get this Monday and this Monday afternoon? Much more of the same. <clears throat> you know, just when you think you're going to see this kind of wild bounce back to the upside in the S&P futures, I mean, we'll just do a, a quick recap of some of the action on an intraday basis. Now, granted, you know, you're watching this. You're like, I don't want to go through every motion of the day. Some of you guys watched it. Some of you didn't. But the quick recap is this. An overnight trade, that's overnight trade from Sunday to ultimately the open here on Monday, we had already done almost 500,000 S&P futures contracts, and each one of those S&P uh, futures is worth right around the neighborhood of about $96,000, and you'd already traded 500,000 of them before we even opened in the morning, so you knew we were going to be rocking at the open. So then markets open, and listen to me, every single trader I know right now is like, here comes the bounce, I'm talking about the bounce, I'm waiting for the bounce. And yet, what did they get? No bounce. We continued to kind of sell off throughout the course of the day. I mean, hey, I'm right there with you. When you saw this slide kind of midday, you're like, that's it. It's the end of the financial world as we know it. And just when you thought you were going to toss your cookies up, I mean, we exploded to the upside over here. That explosion, though, if you look at the futures right now, that's, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, they ended up on the trading day one full point. What was the range? Okay, that's almost a 40 point range in trade, including the overnight, you know, range. But uh, again, during the trading day here, we traded to, again, 1928. That's the S&P futures all the way down to 1890. Yeah, it's pretty much a 40 point range on the day. So nothing quiet about it. Market explodes to the upside in, you know, the last hour of trade and then just when you think you're going to go nothing but upside we stop on a dime reverse come down everybody turns around and go oh i think i'm going to be sick again i don't know about you but i i really enjoy this volatility i mean come on people this just does it for don um i've been waiting years for this kind of a trade <laughs> anyway Let's bring up some bigger, broader levels. If you're not so much into the, you know, incessant volatility, there's a few things that I need to point out here moving forward. Uh, number one, okay, you have to be thinking in the back of your head, this 1900 level in the S&Ps is a big number, and it is, and you'd be right. Now, back in August, you saw this 1831 print, but this is what we call a non-adjusted futures contract. Futures contracts roll forward. As they roll forward, it changes the levels. So we're going to adjust for contract changes, hit apply, hit OK, but you're going to find out that low takes us right basically to 1811. Again, we just adjusted the futures contract. So if you're thinking in the back of the mind, we might test some of these August lows before this is all over. Hey, I don't know about you, but I'm thinking the exact same thing. Well, the thing that's just interesting me is um, I can't remember too many times okay, in, in my trading career where I was sitting there saying like, okay, we're going to bounce today. Okay, we're going to bounce today. Yes, we're going to bounce today. We haven't bounced yet which I'm starting to succumb to the idea the first time that we do bounce, they may smack them right then and there. So I'm going to tell you, if you're looking for this big bounce in the marketplace and you need a bounce either to exit a position or relieve any position that you're currently in, come on, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. You're sitting there you're like, oh, please bounce. Bounce a little bit so I can get the heck out of the crap that I'm in before I get crushed. The moment you get a bounce, okay, I think you got to sell into it. And in fact, I'm going to urge you that if you're not comfortable with your contract size, you really have to consider bailing out of portions of your position. This market, it's not looking good at all. It's looking about as sick as a market can get. I mean, Listen, today was the only green candle we've seen in quite some time. And for those of you that are, you know, this is like, oh, it's the almost the infamous doji star candle, which is the indecision candle. Really, indecision after how many umpteen down days in a row over here. But it is now my feeling that uh, the trading community as a whole, ladies and gentlemen, would probably sell anything they possibly can. Now, here's a little bit more of a bright spot to the market. The bright spot, 
the bonds, they finally backed off a little bit today. Okay, The bonds have really kind of been on an upward tear. And you can track this all the way back until, you know, early November over here. So they've been exploding to the upside. Okay, there was one big hip hiccup over here, but that had to do with a little thing called the FOMC, a couple of more of those. Anyway, the bonds, though, have been really trending higher. So they back off a little bit today. Now, you're thinking that's a bit of a bullish signal, but not necessarily so. Okay, it is. Okay, very possible, very likely that we could see some wild down days with the bonds also selling off. And you, you kind of go like, well, how can that happen? I mean, typically what you see is you see money coming out of the S&Ps and into the bond market. So S&Ps down, bonds up. And that's what you would typically think. However, there's a lot more going on. Okay, this isn't just, you know, the S&P selling off. It's kind of a global sell off. I mean, something as easy as, hey, Maybe China, who owns a tremendous number of bonds, decides, okay, and the Chinese markets are down almost 6% yesterday, maybe China decides to sell. U.S. Treasury markets sells them off along with selling. The rest of the world is selling S&P futures out there. Remember, in a market, okay, like we're in right now that's much more volatile, you got to stop worrying about individual stocks. I've got a big position in Costco. And I'm short, and it's up $2.61. Do I care? No! Why doesn't that bother me at all? It doesn't matter at this point. Okay? What does matter is broader markets. Just because a couple of retailers happen to bounce today, and they did, along with Amazon, okay? You see Walmart up today. You see Target up today. Again, a couple of retailers bounce. Listen, that sector can still get yanked down in a second by the S&Ps. Focus on the broader markets, individual stocks right now. It's not that they just don't matter. They don't, okay? You've re got to re uh, like, really recognize and keep your eye on the ball that this is about, again, more of a liquidation event than anything. And that's what we're going to be looking for in days to come. So although the bonds are down today, and that's one of the more bullish signals I've seen, you know, in any of the recent trade that we've seen inside of the last like two weeks. Sure, that's great. You know, the bonds are down. Nevertheless, oil's also down 6% today. Okay. I mean, the only way to say is traders are just barfing oil. I mean, that's, hey, that is a technical trading term. When you puke your position, it means basically you throw in the towel. This is just caught in this ugly downward spiral. Me? I'm a big time contrarian in oil. I actually have right now a long position in oil. I don't mind telling you this. I did not get in at a good price today. So I'm down about a buck in oil, but I bought the physical oil futures contract and I'm going to sit with it for a couple of days. Why? Because I'm that kind of crazy. And I think that oil really today got rocked. All right. And if you look at this, if you are a little bit more of a technician, what about you guys? But I felt capitulation in here. The volume is up. It was heated trade. I mean, this is, again, it's going back months and months. It's about as heated as trade gets, but another 6% down move inside of oil. And you ask yourself, how long can this last? Well, I'll tell you what. And the reason I took that little bit of a bullish position, all throughout the course of the oil trade today, volume was actually increasing, which told me traders are just dump, 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 dump. I can't take it anymore. I need to dump. I got to dump. Anyway, I actually got long an oil contract today. Hey, that kind of crazy? Oil contracts might not be for you. Maybe use some spread inside of the XLE. But again, I am long oil. I am holding that position uh, overnight. Probably hold on to it for the next couple of days, looking for a bounce. I'm upside down by a dollar. I don't you know, make any no two ways about it. Yes, I bought oil today. And yes, right after I buy it, it dips a dollar. Not all about timing. Okay, I am about price, and it feels like oil is right in that capitulation stage. So we'll see if we can get a little bit of a bounce back in oil. Other area, got to watch closely, the financials. And I'm going to tell you why the financials are so incredibly important. They truly are kind of caught in an ugly death spiral over here to the downside. What's shocking to me today is the financials are up three cents. Why is that shocking to me? Bonds are actually down almost a full point. 29 ticks is almost a full point, right? 32 ticks to a point. So the bonds are down and financials, that not only doesn't it rally them, they can't get out of their own way, okay? So they're actually up a whopping three cents in, again, 
uh, a day where bonds are down. Now, typically, when bonds are down, it's good for financials. Financials are rallying. The issue you've got with financials right now, and this is where I really want you to focus the next your attention for the next couple of days, earnings are kicking off. Now, to me, earnings in earlier this week, they mean squat. Alcoa, uh, they're not even part of the Dow anymore. People are like, earnings is kicking off. It's Alcoa. No, 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 nobody cares. But what they do care about is the fact the financials are next up on the docket. So when you start looking at the XLF, okay, got to start looking towards individual stocks. City. When is City's earnings coming up? Well, today is the 11th. City's earnings are coming up on the 15th. Okay. You start to look at Wells Fargo, Bank of America. We're actually going to get some wild earnings coming out in the next couple of days inside of the financials. Are we in trouble? Okay. And when I mean are we in trouble, you got to ask, is the world starting to come into financial trouble? I don't know. But the only earnings to me, like, do you think I care about Netflix? No. Would I do a trade around Netflix around the earnings? Sure. Let's get that out of our system in a couple of weeks. Do I care about the financials over here? I don't care about Amazon, any of the retail stores over there. I want to see if there's pain in the financial sector. Because that, to me, is one of the biggest litmus tests of this particular market. Because you really want pain in the marketplace? You will feel it in the financial. So we want very, very carefully to see what they're doing. And it surprises me again, the XLF not moving on a day where the bonds are down. The other thing that you're going to notice, in the next four days, okay, volatility is elevated in the financials up to 29%. Okay, 11 days out, the volatility is at what? 27%. Now compare that to the S&P. This is something like the spiders. Okay, spiders only 25 vol and then 23 vol. So what am I telling you? The XLF, not only is it displaying like, I can't get out of my own way, but it's also displaying, okay, a definitive sign of risk in this case. And that, that sign of risk is, hey, look out. I'm getting volatile over here. I mean, it doesn't sound like large expected moves, but over the next 11 days, we're looking at like an 86 cent move expected inside of the XLF. Again, many of the financials are due out inside of the next week. So from this point on, we are going to be watching those financials really carefully over there. Again, doesn't matter about the individual stocks. This is about the market right now. Can we get out of this? Last thing I want to reiterate, if you need to get out and you see the bounce, okay, you better not be the last guy to the door because I'm going to tell you right now, traders are going to sell a bounce. We may get wild, ripping up days in the markets. Traders are going to sell into it. You might not recognize that right now. But you will when you start to see that first up move in the markets. Thanks a lot, everybody, for joining us here at Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. We are going to be broadcasting in the morning. I'm live at the open for about two hours. I'm doing full blown coaching sessions with definitive topics now. Jeff White is doing an hour to the close. Join us each and every day or join us in the archives. Thanks a lot. Have a good trading day. Bye bye.